Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom Early Access. My name is Swoop there and we are here in Fir Collar Mountain Park to build a really cool building. I'm actually really excited about this one. It is quite a different style to a lot of the other buildings in my park and there's quite a lot of detail that went into this one. So I hope you enjoy the build. Before I get started on my voiceover around the building process itself and then give you some interesting information wanted on facts because this building and the habitat surrounding it is for a giant herd of iguanodon. I just want to give my channel a shameless plug. I don't normally do this but we are so close to 2,000 subscribers and there are so many people that drop in to watch my videos and then just forget to hit either that like button or that subscribe button. So if that's you and you do want to help me out even just liking the video is such a massive help. Thanks so much guys and let's get on with it let's have a little chat about this building so I wanted to build something that wasn't particularly modern because most of the builds in Fakola Mountain Park are very modern and I thought that perhaps this could be maybe an old sort of boathouse building that had been here for quite some time maybe it sort of was built a long time ago in the past and it was kind of as you can see I'm making it look a little bit run down but they've kind of added in some glass and window panes and maybe redone the floor and some of the things that they would need to do in order to keep it safe and I guess accessible for all guests and then what I decided to do was build ramps rather than stairs because I wanted it to be able to be wheelchair accessible and I quite liked the idea of using these big windows at the front. I think it gives it a really sort of charming vibe. So I thought I'd just go with that and then make it look quite rustic. I also decided to put quite a lot of baskets and boxes and coils of rope and things inside the building itself and I was going to do that just to make it look a little bit messy but then I thought no maybe you know the people that have you know own the park or the keepers that work in the park have themed this building so it's sort of you know back to its roots and it kind of resembles what it would have looked like back in the day when it was full of you know bunches of baskets and ropes and things like that so this is a building that people can really immerse themselves into when they're looking at the iguanodon. I also put in an upstairs section because when it was just a flat building like this it looked quite boring and not really it didn't really have a lot of interest so I put in a second section and upstairs it's just I don't know the keepers have just thrown in some pallets and some and some buckets and things like that up there that they needed to have out of the way and then there's a little hole in the roof down the bottom where they can attach a ladder and they just climb up into that loft section if they need to ever get anything down or if they need to ever pass anything up to store anything up there so that is full of junk which I'll show you in the real-time walkthrough and I will also show you the signs that I built, a lot of that is not in the speed build because this build was just too long to be able to show you everything. So I am sorry about that, but you would have been watching a speed build for half an hour if I hadn't cut out quite a lot of what I built. So I think the build itself took me about four and a half, maybe five hours, uh, depending on sort of what you count as building and playing the game. I spent a bit of time, you know, doing some personal things as well while the game was open. And then, you know, the editing process as well will take a bit of time. So all in all, I didn't want to bore you with every single thing in my build, but I also did want you to have the opportunity to see, I guess, most of it. Also with this building, I decided to do a custom roof. Don't ask me why I decided to do it. And I can tell you right now, it's probably going to be a while before I decide to ever build a custom roof again. It was a pain in the proverbial. I really, really struggled with it. I ended up doing it and I think it came out pretty good to be fair. So often the more time you spend on something, the better it looks. It's just such a shame that you have to spend a great deal of time and it can be quite frustrating as well if it's not coming out the way you want it to but in the end the roof did come out the way I wanted it to it looks like little wooden shingles which is what I was after and then I tied it all together with some wooden beams at the end of the build. Now some of you might remember the iguanodon from the somewhat interesting Disney film Dinosaur. I don't want to talk too much about that because in my opinion it was a bit of a flop. Um, however it is there so you know if you haven't seen it and you feel like watching it we'll go for gold but I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory about the actual iguanodon, how it was discovered and what its name means and a little another few other facts that you might find interesting. 
Now, the Iguanodon's name means Iguana Tooth, and I went and did a little bit of research around the name Iguana Tooth. It is derived from the modern day lizard, the Iguana, and Don actually means tooth. So there you go. I wanted to find out who discovered it, and I went and did some reading, and I found a really interesting little story, and I'm really hoping it's true because it's quite cute. So it's about Mary Ann Mantle and her husband, uh, Gideon Aladon or Alla, Alla non mantle maybe, and they are recorded as having found the first evidence of the Iguanodon. They were on a trip, I believe, and Mary Ann, who was Gideon's wife, was accompanying Gideon on this trip in uh, Sussex when she saw something on the side of the road. And so they pulled over and had a look and Mary went to have an investigate and she actually discovered the first collection of large iguanodon teeth that were actually embedded in the rocks. And because her husband Gideon was at the time an amateur paleontologist, he studied the teeth and then he tried to, I guess, determine what they belong to. He reached out for expert advice from some other paleontologists. And anyway, long story short, the fossilized teeth resembled those of the iguana and, you know, only many times larger, I guess, than the modern day iguanas. And so that's how they got their name because Gideon decided that the fossilized teeth looked like iguana teeth only scaled up. So he based the name of the iguanodon on this link to the iguanas. The iguanodon lived in the early Cretaceous period and it was a herbivore. It could grow to up to about 12 meters and they weighed around about 3.5 tons, which is, you know, that's a hefty size. They had an interesting legs and feet their thumbs were which they are famous for are spikes and they kind of stick outwards i suppose from the three other main digits of their two front four legs um and in it's really really funny i was looking at some early um images and drawings and restorations of the iguanodon and some of them have the spike placed on the iguanodon's nose uh some of them have the iguanodon only ever standing on two legs so i'll pop in some uh, pictures for you guys to see it's really interesting how paleontology has evolved over time and how people's knowledge and experience has been able to show us i suppose more realistic images of what dinosaurs actually looked like rather than in the past they were very very interesting they the thumb might have been used to protect themselves against predators but it also could have been used for foraging food it's still largely debated what the thumb itself was used for and the largest clump of iguanodon fossils were actually found in a Belgian coal mine in 1878 and more than 35 skeletons were excavated out of there which really gave scientists a great help in developing I suppose a better understanding of the iguanodon. All right guys so I'm going to leave that there there is probably about four more minutes of the speed build left um, so if you really just do enjoy listening to the music rather than me prattling on then I have four minutes here for you to do that otherwise I will see you on the other side in the real time part at the end
Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the real time walkthrough. We are just here. I'll just turn around so you can have a look outside the back entrance of the Dilophosaurus building. So the round building that I built in my last episode and the easiest way at the moment to access the Iguanodon viewing is this way. However, I am going to build another access point because some people may not end up coming out the back side of this building behind us. So let's head on down the path and you know, we're surrounded by all this beautiful forest and a couple of trees on the path as per usual. <laughs> we'll remove those in the stream probably. And then if you look here, just on the left, there is a little offshoot that you can walk down. So the river goes along here. You can kind of catch a glimpse of the boathouse in the background, or you can continue on this way and there will be a bridge across the other side here. And there will be a path that comes down. So you can access the Iguanodon from either side, but you don't necessarily have to walk through the Dilophosaurus building. So, and that's kind of typical of a lot of parks. There's Lots of different ways for you to get to the same place saves a uh, massive foot traffic in any one direction so you can see here there's a few things i cut out of the speed build it's quite dark and dank in here which is kind of how i wanted it to look because this part you would often it would quite be quite damp and it would often be quite cool in these areas but i put up these kind of i guess they're shields to kind of stop the guests from being able to see the fences of the habitat because they're kind of an eyesore and this just is kind of like a, an eye screen just to make people's viewing a little bit nicer and then they wander on up this stair here you might be able to catch a glimpse through here you're probably not quite that tall though so this would be more of the view that you would have but you can hear the iguanodon wandering around in there and you can hear them making some sounds so that'll be getting you excited and you head on up into the boathouse itself now i'm just going to change the time because i did put in some lights in here because it is quite dark even in the daytime it doesn't seem to matter what time of day i make it it's always dark in this boathouse which i don't mind but i have put some lights in to make it a bit easier for the real time tour so let's just change the time of day okay there we go so you can see I've popped in the lights in here. I'll just turn off this so that it looks a bit nicer. There we go. And if you are just coming along here, you can get a really nice view straight in. Oh, there's a guanodon right here. That would be great too. If you were a guest, you'd be so happy with that view. But you get a nice view right up to the little waterfall down the back there. And also these kind of marshy areas right here or you can head on into the building itself so in here you can see they've done a lot of theming there is some education boards in here one around the corner here around a history of Focola and then this one here the largest captive herd Araguanodon and learn about our thumbs then you can see also in this building this is the little gap I was talking about so you know the staff can grab a ladder and they can head up into the top here and put anything up there that they need to but if you were a guest you would come in here and this would be the vista that you would be greeted with so let's head on over and have a good look so beautiful right it's a shame that the keepers haven't put some money into making these just big glass panels because it would be then an uninterrupted view but the view itself here is beautiful if we change the lighting again so you guys can have a good view of the habitat there we go and then oh we have two iguanodon down here so a lovely viewing Hey guys. And then this habitat is probably the biggest one in the entire park. It goes all the way up into the forest, all the way around the back of the waterfall here. And then they also have some roaming over here on the other side as well. There are about 15 Iguanodon in here. So, you know, you'd be likely to see one. There's one over here in the background I can see, but you'd be very likely to see one if you would come as a guest. I am going to put some more in uh, simply because this habitat is big enough to hold them. And the sign boasts the largest captive dinosaur herd so I want to add in a couple more but I really like how this um, view is framed by the mountains in the background and then this is obviously a mountain that I have created which I did have to make smaller because it looked a bit ridiculous and then we have this beautiful waterfall in the background that's just trickling down and the iguanodon just wandering around in the mud and the marshes collecting their food. So there we have it guys, that's the beautiful view. And then if we turn back around into the boathouse itself, we have another view out of the back here. And you can see where you've just come from. If you've walked down this path, you also get to see straight down the river. And then this barrier here or this gate here is 
part of the Torvosaurus habitat and then the other end of the Torvosaurus habitat is actually the information centre. So that will ground you a little bit if you've been watching my builds. If not, sorry, that was just me prattling on. Uh, you can also see if we head this way, there is another section of this building. So we'll head on past the information sign and we'll head to the other section. Just got a bunch of things down here that the keepers have left around to theme the building with. And then we'll come around here and then we have more viewing out of these windows. They're just slightly smaller windows. And once again, you can just wander up and have a look through. You can see quite a few more iguanodon from this view. So we've got some up here in the back, one hiding in the reeds here, one's asleep and then one's just coming out here. We'll head into the habitat in just a second. I'll show you the rest of this build first. We turn around and then we can come out this way. There's some seats here and God forbid if you should fall in there is something to grab you, a little life raft there. And then another history of Focola. And if you come on down this ramp, this pathway leads to the Brachiosaurus building. And I'll zoom out to show you what that looks like. There is my custom roof. It took a while. All right, let's zoom out and have a look. So here is the round Dilophosaurus building from the last episode. What's this? Oh, that's the great. I thought it looked like a dinosaur that I'd popped in there. This is the round building. And then we have the T-Rex building here and the T-Rex habitat. And as I said, out of the back of the boathouse here you look down the river and you can see this part here which is the Torvosaurus habitat and then the information center up here and then straight across if you come along here and come across you'll come down and along this path and here is where we are going to be able to fit in a couple more habitats for two more dinosaurs possibly three depending on the dinosaurs I select and then here will be where it connects up to the Brachiosaurus viewing building over this side Argentinosaurus as well are also in that habitat and then off towards the tropical house and the Edmontosaurus viewing. So let's have another look at the Iguanodon habitat itself. It's quite a few plants sticking out of the rocks there swoop. You might need to fix that. That's one of my pet peeves when I build is getting plants that stick out of rocks. It's so unrealistic. Um, so we'll go around and we'll fix that later. But Let's just have a little fly over this habitat. Nice and slow so we can have a good look. Lots of iguanodon about. This one up here is having a graze. Then you've got these ones over in the back here. They've made their way along. I put them all down here so they really do get around these guys. This one's deciding to walk across the marshes. Probably not the best idea, mate. Let's head on over. You can see here's the fence line on this side. And I'll show you where the fence line is in here. Right, so over here. And then it runs kind of the length along here and up here. So they have a lot of space, these guys, which I think is quite realistic as well when it comes to a dinosaur park. They would need quite a lot of space. I love this skin. Hello, mate. What a shame you're in the shade. Do you know what? You won't be in the shade for much longer. There we go. Okay, having a sleep. These huge big thumb spikes that they have. Amazing. There's another friend over here. And we'll just head on over and I'll show you the waterfall and how I have blocked off them from kind of swimming out if they decided to get right in the water, which I don't believe the dinosaurs in game do yet. However, they might eventually be able to. There's one here. So there is still quite a few in here. I'm not particularly happy with this waterfall yet at this stage, but I'll fix that down the track when we get a few more water FX. All right, and here is where the river, or this has kind of been built to let the river through. And even if the river rises, you know, there's heaps of uh, mesh for it to just pass through. However, the dinosaurs cannot escape out that way. 
and we'll head back to the boathouse. There we go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into my video. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. It really does help out a small creator. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.